Hi there, everybody. Welcome back. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit more about uh, sort of the collecting aspect of some of these sim games and some of the things that people just don't talk about so much. So the theme today is on APA baseball card collecting, right? I have posted over the years on message boards, and I get the same sort of responses from people. Oh, the cards are worth whatever people are willing to pay for it, blah, blah, blah. And while it is technically true, you have to be very careful about minefields. So we're not going to look here at anything that's currently up for sale, but I do want to show you a couple of sold listings, and you might be surprised at some of these things. I haven't done a whole ton of research on this stuff. Um, however, there are things that I know about APA cards that um, uh, I would say probably the average person doesn't really know or isn't fully aware of. The first thing I want to tell you before anything else is that the vast majority of APA sets are overprinted um, and it's not even funny. When you compare it to Stratomatic sets, APA sets are like incredibly overprinted and it, I mean it's just it's ridiculous when you think about it. APA sets especially from uh, around 1969 through 1992 were so overprinted that um, I'm surprised that the cards have any sort of uh, value as far as uh, complete sets are concerned. I mean, I'm surprised that anything would go for three figures. Um, even APA cards from 1957 up through 1969 are, generally speaking, overprinted. This is something nobody talks about, and I believe the reason why few people talk about this on the forums is because there are certain people who are preying upon the ignorance of uh, many of the people who go out to buy these cards. So let's go through a couple of uh, completed auctions here. I'll just talk about this a little bit off the cuff here for you. So I have the screen open here. First of all, this is a price that should surprise you if you're interested in APA cards. This is the original 1951 season APA cards. 16 teams, not reprints, so it's great. Sold for just a little under $5,000. I say a little bit under, a little bit over $4,500, which is when you consider the rarity of this set. This is incredible. This looks near mint or better. Um, let's see if we can see the original listing, if we can take a quick look at some photographs and um, get sort of an idea of what it is that we're looking at. You can always tell that these are the original sets, if you can see here, because these are um, bigger envelopes. So back in the old, old days of Apple Baseball, you have the bigger envelopes that are hard to get. This has the original box. Man, this is the original box. Unfortunately, the um, uh, sticker has come off over time. There are some nice stamps on there too, though. And um, in looking at this card, you can see the Terry uh, Brasheen. That's a pretty nice looking card. The backs of these cards look very, very nice. Um, what is this? This is not anything interesting, whatever. They're taking photos of like random stuff. This is um, the uh, the 12 listing, you know, from uh, Appa.zip. I mean, whatever. This is though a surprising um, low amount considering how rare this is. 1950, 51, 52 original sets should probably be going more in terms of like five figures, honestly, when you consider how rare they are. Part of the problem though is the lack of demand, which is caused in part by the fact that the game company is reprinting this set like as we speak. I think you can order and have it delivered right now. So keep that in mind. Um, that uh, serial number and that um, uh, 12 number and those numbers in the uh, right to the side of it are pretty funny because if those are supposed to be like the value of the cards, that's absolutely ridiculous. Anyway, that, that's sort of like a little bit of a baseline, right? This is like really rare APA stuff. The only rarer set than 51 would probably be 1950, um, which, you know, I mean, you're not going to find. We know that there are like 10 of those in existence. So uh, there you have it. Here's another thing that you might consider to be rare. <clears throat> This is the Apple World Series baseball game. I had a copy of this for a while. This might actually be the same copy, except mine was nicer. It wasn't as beat up. Um, I got mine for well under $100. Look, they color-coded the uh, numbers there on the charts, which is um, kind of cute. Thanks. Thanks, you ruined it. Um, and the cards, at least, are not kind of nice and clean. This was under $100. Keep that in mind, right? The reason why I say to keep that in mind is because look at this next one. So somebody bought this. I was looking at this option auction. Um, Apple Major League Baseball game, 1986 teams, 24 teams from 1986 season, which means it's not the complete 86 season. So why are you buying this for $100 plus $20 shipping? It's a ridiculous price. This sort of said, I know that complete games like with all the boards are not all that common, but I don't even see here where the boards are. What condition are the boards in, right? You go look at this and, oh, yeah, you don't have any sort of information about the boards at all, and it's by a general gaming company that probably knows nothing about Magic, or about about Magic the Gathering and knows nothing about APA. They probably know a lot about Magic the Gathering. They probably don't know much about APA, which is a problem because if you're trying to get this game to play the game, you need to make sure the boards are there, right? Obviously. 
So we'll close that, go on past that. Here's another one I really want to talk about because I think a lot of people get this wrong. This is where I say this is part of the thing from the era uh, where um, overprinting actually had started. So this is a 1960 original set that sold for less than two, $379 with uh, whatever in shipping. I'm guessing this sold for less than $300, just gut feeling. I mean, you look at this, yeah, the envelopes are falling apart. These are also the uh, bigger style envelopes this is before they went to the smaller ones. These cards look nice, and you always want to look for the mantle, the Maris, you know, and some of these other stars. The cards are nice and clean, you know, and the Kofax had a D that year. Um, Ernie Banks, um, you know, looks pretty nice and so on, so it probably wasn't played with that much. A um, little small crease in the lower corner for the mantle. I mean, nobody really cares. You're not going to send this to PSA. The envelopes have paper loss. That's actually not really that big of a deal for these longer envelopes. I've seen a lot like this. You know, that's not a huge deal. I wouldn't worry about that personally. Um, a lot of people end up just replacing the envelopes anyway. It's it's not a huge deal. There's not that much money in the envelopes, honestly. People usually want these cards to play with them. Um, but the thing that will surprise you is that this is the 1960 set, and yet it's not even reaching $400, right? Now, I'll tell you my story about this. I bought years and years ago, I bought a 1961 set original that was kind of beat up. I mean, the Maris card looked like it had been played with a couple thousand times. Um, I got it, though, for um, under $100 when I bought it, and then I sold it again about seven, eight years later, again for under $100. Now, for years, people thought that the 61 set was rare and in very, very high demand. That changed after Apple reprinted um, the set, you know, had the 1961 so-called R set come out. Um, that was, what, late 80s, early 90s, something like that. Um but what really changed about these sets was the birth of eBay and people's realization that there were more of these sets out there than they thought. A 1961 set, maybe in kind of nice condition, could fetch maybe like 300 bucks. One that's been played with, you shouldn't pay over 100 for it. You really shouldn't. Even today, even with inflation, even with all these other problems, I mean, you know, there's just too many of them out there. If you look long enough on eBay, you will see these sets come up over and over and over again. And what's happening, and I hate to say this, but what's happening is we're getting older guys who are kind of the baby boomer generation who remember playing with these games when they were a kid, and they're dying off, or they're about to die off, and they're trying to get these cards into the hands of people who want to have them and who aren't just going to throw them away. And that's the reason why you're seeing so many for sale. They will increase in um, numbers that are on sale. Mark my words, the prices on these will continue to go down. So if you really want to have like a big collection of APA cards, the only time I would say buy now is if it's single column and not including 57. You can always get 57. Anything from before then you want to really look into. Um, and that includes, by the way, great teams of the past. If there are great teams of the past, all single column from like 52 or so, buy it immediately because you might not see that again. It's hard to find the reprints of those that Francis Rose put out. Last but not least, this is a little bit dearer to my heart. This is Skeetersoft's 1935 season, NP3. I wanted to show you this because it sold for the $120 he was looking for, plus uh, the 17 whatever in shipping and handling. Is it really worth this? I don't know. You need to have the Skeetersoft boards. These don't, uh, oh, he, he'll give you the boards if you need it. I probably should save this guy to my favorite sellers. Right, so I mean, yeah, you know, you can get the boards from him if you want. Skeetersoft cards are going to continue to be in high demand. Bill didn't print a whole ton of these. It's a great game to play, card and dice, if you really want to. As time goes on and as people start to learn more about what Skeetersoft was when they were making cards, the ways that they failed, um, that they uh, fixed some of the problems with APA and how the company was running things, what you will discover is that the demand for this stuff will increase over time. Among people who really want to play the game, Skeetersoft is probably the right way to play it. The original APA sets are not too bad. Once you get to Master Game era APA, that's where the questions start coming in. Anyway, I'm going to do more of these. Let me know what you think down in the comments. We're going to talk a little bit more about this and about the errors to sort of avoid um, and uh, prices to really watch out for. Um, again, if you're buying a complete game, like you might have to pay a little bit more, but make sure that you have the boards. Make sure you can read the boards, right? Make sure they're not like falling apart. I've seen some crazy stuff go for stupid prices, and it's because people just don't know, right? So we'll try to teach you a little bit more about it so that you don't uh, end up getting uh, taken to the cleaners. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.